Welcome to our daily service. Right at the heart of the Christian faith, I hope very obviously, is the person of Jesus Christ. And today we're looking at Peter's confession. He was the first to recognise that Jesus is the Christ. I'm going to begin with words from Mark chapter 8. But what about you? Jesus asked. Who do you say I am? Peter answered, you are the Messiah. Loving Father, thank you for sending Jesus, the Messiah, the Christ, into the world. And we pray, open our eyes for some for the first time, for others of us to see more clearly and to appreciate in a deeper way this great truth today, so that our eyes can continually be fixed on the Lord Jesus, that we might be equipped to live for him in his world. And we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. This week we're looking at sections in Mark's Gospel which feature the Apostle Peter. I'm going to read some words from Mark chapter 8. They came to Bethsaida, and some people brought a blind man and begged Jesus to touch him. He took the blind man by the hand and led him outside the village. When he had spat on the man's eyes and put his hands on him, Jesus asked, Do you see anything? He looked up and said, I see people. They look like trees walking around. Once more Jesus put his hands on the man's eyes. Then his eyes were opened, his sight was restored, and he saw everything clearly. Jesus sent him home, saying, don't even go into the village. And then let's say these next words together. Jesus and his disciples went on to the villages around Caesarea Philippi. On the way he asked them, who do people say I am? They replied, some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and still others one of the prophets. But what about you? he asked. Who do you say I am? Peter answered, you are the Messiah. Jesus warned them not to tell anyone about him. We saw yesterday that Peter was one of the first to follow Jesus. And along with the other disciples, he's been going around Galilee, listening as Jesus proclaims the good news, that the kingdom of God is at hand. And on this occasion, he turns to his disciples as they travel in the northern part of Galilee, and he says, who do people say that I am? And the disciples replied, Jesus, they, they recognise you're someone very special. At the very least, you're a prophet. And then Jesus says the key question. But what about you? Who do you say I am? There's really no more important question than that. It's a question that comes to all of us. Not what about your parents or your spouse or your family or friends, but what about you? Who do you say I am? It was certainly a question that Peter would have been thought, thinking about for a long time, along with the other disciples. Ever since they travelled with Jesus and they heard his extraordinary divine claims. So there was the occasion when a paralysed man is, is lowered from a roof and comes down and there on his mat is in front of Jesus. And Jesus says to him, son, your sins are forgiven. And the Pharisees are horrified. This is blasphemy. It's a divine claim. Who is this man who makes such claims? And alongside the divine claims came divine authority. Peter was with the other disciples in a boat on the Sea of Galilee. There's a raging storm. Jesus is asleep and they wake Jesus up. Don't you care if we drown? And Jesus immediately calmed the storm. It was completely completely still. And they said, who is this? Even the winds and the waves obey him. And then just before this passage that we're looking at today, as we read earlier, Jesus heals a man who's blind. Uniquely in Mark's gospel, it's a kind of double healing. He touches the man's eyes and at first he can vaguely see people, but as if they're trees walking. And then Jesus touches him again, and he sees clearly. And only after that, 
does Jesus ask the question, who do people say that I am? Who do you say that I am? And Peter is the first to say, you are the Messiah. Messiah, Hebrew word, Christ, Greek word. Same title. It's the one promised in the Old Testament. God's saviour king. Who was to come into the world to put everything right. And Peter's saying, you're the one to whom all the scriptures beforehand point. Well, have you come to see that Jesus is no ordinary man? He is God's divine king come to rescue. I first realised that in my last year at school. I'd thought about Christianity's basically moral instructions, religious duties. But then I came to see Christianity is Christ. And I encountered him and the astonishing claims he made. Someone who claims to be God is not just a good man, he's either much more or much worse. And I saw the evidence presented in the Gospels. The evidence of his amazing life, his astonishing te teaching, and his remarkable miracles that even his enemies acknowledged. And so along with Peter, I was able to say, yes, you are the Christ. Now that's an important step but it's only, as it were, half the truth. It's very striking what Jesus says immediately after Peter's dramatic confession. He then, we're told, warned them not to tell anyone about him. Now why? Well, surely because other people had the wrong idea of what the Messiah was. They imagined a great military ruler who'd crushed the Romans. But that was not the kind of Messiah Jesus was going to be. As we'll see tomorrow, he immediately then begins to teach that he must suffer and die. Yes, it's one thing to recognise Jesus is the Christ, but that step only leads to you, as it were, half-seeing. There's another miracle that needs to take place. And to recognise that not only is Jesus the great divine king, but he comes into his kingdom through his suffering and his death. More about that tomorrow. But for now we rejoice in the great truth that Jesus is God's King. He's the Christ. We're going to declare our faith in him now in the words of this creed. Together we say, We believe in God the Father, from whom grace and peace proceed, whom we serve with our whole heart. We believe in Jesus Christ, as to his humanity, born a descendant of David. We believe in the Holy Spirit, by whose power Jesus was declared to be the Son of God through his resurrection from the dead. We believe in Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's turn to God in prayer. We begin by saying together the words of the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and for ever. Amen. With so many anxieties in our minds, so many problems in the world, we pray, Heavenly Father, our ever-present help in trouble, our fortress and our God, calm the anxious fears of all who turn to you. Give strength and healing to those who are sick and courage and skill to those who care for them. Grant wisdom and clarity to those in authority, and humble us all to call upon you, that we may be saved not only in this life, but also for that which is to come, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And in the silence we bring our own prayers to the Lord. We mention those we're particularly concerned for. Lord, in your mercy, 
hear our prayer. Jesus is the Christ, God's King, and that's reason to be joyful. Our song, Rejoice, the Lord is King. The Lord Jesus, after his resurrection and just before his ascension, sent his disciples into the world to proclaim the good news about him. And he promised them, I will be with you always to the very end of the age. And so we can be sure he'll be with us today, this week, and throughout the rest of our lives. Armed with that great reassurance, let's go into the world to give our lives in his service. And as we do so, may the blessing of God, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among us and those we love, now and always. Amen.